Well, here we are at chapter 10, the chapter 10 ov overview. There is one big main idea in this section, and that is linear correlation. So you've got paired data. So these were twins, identical twins, that were separated at birth. Later, psychologists tracked them down and measured their IQ. So here are the two twins. One has an IQ of 90, the other has an IQ of 95. The idea with a linear correlation is we're trying to see is there a relationship. So if you have this number get bigger, is this number also going to get bigger? And is there some type of equation that predicts what this number is going to be if you know what this one is? So to start with, test for linear correlation. First of all, see if there is a relationship at all. So I went ahead and typed the data in list 1 and list 2. So here it is in list 1 and list 2. And it's important to make sure that you double check and see that the pairs are lined up correctly. So 99 and 101, 105 and 106, 109, 103, etc. So I did this a few minutes ago, so I'm just trying to show you everything's paired up. Okay, you might be asked for the scatter plot. And so you could just draw that by hand, making this the x-axis and this the y-axis. And then just like you did in beginning algebra class, put dots. Or you could have the calculator do it if you go to second stat plot. And just go to number one. And we need this one right here, the first one. So hit enter to turn it on. Go down, hit enter for scat scatter plot. Then wherever your data is. Mine is in list one and list two. And then you have a choice between these three marks. Personally, I sort of like the little plus sign. And then after that, just go to zoom number nine. So you could scroll down on the screen or just hit zoom and then the number nine. And then it will show you, here is the trend, that basically there's a line the data is not perfectly lined up, as you can see, but there is this basic trend that it goes up like this. That means there's a positive linear correlation. If it was going down, it would be a negative correlation. If the dots were just randomly scattered about, that would be no correlation. Now to actually do the test, what we do is go to Stat and go to Calculate. And then number four is the linear regression test. So when you hit enter, the newer versions of the calculator do this. They ask you where are the x's and where are the y's, list 1 and list 2. And then you can just move down to calculate. That's all you need to tell, list 1 and list 2. On the other calculators, you would just put, it would put linear regression on the screen like that, and then it would give you the answer like that. So we need the r. So we need I'll just use this as my scratch paper area R, turned out to be a 0.948, which means there's a strong linear correlation. If this was a 1.0, then it is a perfect line. So if it's close to that, then it's going to be close to a perfect line. The other thing we need is y equals ax plus b. Most people in the world call lines y equals mx plus b, but for some reason at Texas Instruments, they call it AX plus B. So this is the slope, and then that's the B. So the equation of the line is 928X, and then the B, 8.148. OK, so now we're going to use that information. Test for a linear correlation. So for this, you don't have to write down a claim on a hypothesis test. The wording is the same every time. Test for a linear correlation between these two ideas. Here, it's the IQs of the twins. The R values are made so that they're always going to be between positive 1 and negative 1, with 0 being right here. Then the next thing we need to do is look up the critical values. And the critical value is found on this very smallest table, A6. So the critical value for R. 
You only have two choices, 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. We're going to be using 95% level of confidence. And then you just need to know the sample size. Well, I could count them, but I could also just go right here and go to the last number. There's 20 of them. So n equals 20. So if it's 20, I'm going to be using this. 0 0.05 would mean the critical value is 0 0.444. So this would be a 0.444. This side, it would be negative 0.444. And then the test statistic is the R, which is 0 0.948. And then we're just trying to see, does a 948 land in the critical region? And it sure does. It makes it past 0.444. That means there is a positive linear correlation. The positive part of the correlation means that as one score goes up, so this one goes from 95 to 105, then this one will also go up from 93 to 107. If it was a situation where there's a negative correlation, that doesn't mean there's not one. It means there is a relationship, but it's a negative relationship. Um, for example, so the two things would do the opposite. So, for example, the I would say, like in general, the more cigarettes that a person lives, the less years they're going to live. Something like that, where the two things do the opposite. Okay, so we're done with part A. Part B, find the regression equation. Well, that's the one we wrote down on the scratch paper earlier. Y equals 0.928x plus 8.148. More than that, we could even graph it. So if we just go to y equals, let me erase this whole junk, and type in that equation, 0.928x plus 8.148, and then go back to the graph, it will show you the scatter plot, and then it will show you the line of best fit, or the regression line. So basically, it's trying to go right through the middle of the dots. So now we're going to go on to part C. Predict the IQ of the second twin. So this was the Y value. Because whenever you have data and you put it in a list like this, then the calculator is going to use this as X and this as Y. So if it was the second twin, the second twin is the Y value. If, so the first twin, that's the x. So in other words, it's saying if x equals a 118, then what does y equal? So we just do the regression equation. 0.928 times 118 plus the 8.148 from the answer to part b. And then find out how much that is. 0.928 times 118 plus 8.148. So if one has an IQ of 118, the other one will have an IQ of 117.652. Sketch the scatter plot. Okay, so we did this on the calculator, but now I just need a bit of an artistic rendering of that right here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should look something like it. Do it like this because there's less glare over here. So let's see, the, the line basically goes like this, and then I can make it even look better with color, I mean with a different color. So there's three, that one, here's three right there. Two right there. Can't tell if that's one on there or not. 
So what I could do is I could go trace, and it'll jump from dot to dot. There's that one, that one. Oh, there was one right there, and then two out here. There's a cluster of three, and there's two like that. I think there's more right in here. There's that one. Yeah. Oh, there was another one right here. All right, so that's the, the basic idea. Oh, and then this is going from the 90s. So this would be the 90s up to, what's the biggest? I guess I could just look at the list. The biggest is one, 11 or 115, so up to 115. So let me see. Okay, that's enough of a scale so you can see what's going on. All right, then for the last idea of this chapter is what if it's not a straight line? So for example, this data which I just made up. It doesn't have a story or a cues or anything like that. So just numerical data. I've got this in list three and list four. And so if you take a look at the graph, the dots, that's fine, but now I need to change this second three, second four. And then zoom number nine. Why did it do that? Don't like that. Okay, calculator's acting up. Zoom, stat. There we go. So that looks like a parabola. So a parabola is an arc shape. So I could just put a quick sketch of it. The directions didn't say I have to, but I always like to do a little bit of artwork when I can. So I think it looks like a parabola. Or in other words, this is going to be quadratic. Quadratic regression. So simply go to where we did the linear regression, stat, calculate, and then the other ones are below the linear regression. So here would be quadratic. This would be cubic if we put a piece of scratch paper. Cubic if it basically looked like this shape. And then quartic, it could look like quartic could look like this shape, etc. So the more the curvier it gets, that's what these are. Then linear regression again, I don't know why. Natural log regression used in science as well as the exponential regression. Power regression if you have a function that grows very fast. Logistic growth, that's for populations and biologists and such. Anyway, let's go back to quadratic regression. And then my data is in list three and list four. List three, list four, and calculate. So it says that r squared is equal to one, so it's a perfect fit. That's because I made this data up from a quadratic so that it would fit perfectly. But we still get to do the last part of it. The equation is negative 1, so that goes in front of x squared, and then minus 4x, oops, that's a 5, I missed the 5. Excuse me while I get my eraser. Okay, it was a negative 1 first, and then a positive 5, so that's for x, and then a negative 4. 
And then I can make sure that that's right by going back to y equals, and then type that in, negative x squared plus 5x minus 4, and then go back to the graph, and it should match the dots perfectly. Look, it's magic. I predicted the future. Well, that's it for chapter 10.